You're listening to the Future Tech Health Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Until I reached age 40, I never realized the obvious, that we all have medical issues, or we at least have a family member or close relation that had, has, or will have them in the future. Medicine and biological systems are the final frontier. Until we've conquered death, figured out how life began, cured cancer, and understood our purpose in the universe, there's a heck of a lot to talk about when it comes to our health. Future Tech Health means I'll be covering futuristic topics that are actually already in clinical trials or even starting to appear on shelves or by prescription or available for your own use. We dive deep into stem cells, CRISPR-Cas9, the science of sleep, epigenetics, medical testing, cancer, ketogenic diets, stem cells, aging, regenerative medicine, and more. My goal for you, the listener, is to learn from these podcasts. You may very well learn something that may change the course of your life for the better, steer you towards a new career, or give you insight into addressing a serious medical problem. Remember, however, this podcast and its content is informational in nature only. No medical, tax, legal, financial, or psychological advice is being given. If you enjoy the podcast, please listen, subscribe, like, and share it with friends. Thank you. Hello, this is Richard Jacobs with the Future Tech and Future Tech Health Podcast. I have Chris Ellis. He's the founder of Audio Cardio. The website is audiocardio.com. Chris, thanks for coming. Uh, thanks for having me, Richard. Yeah, what, what's the premise of uh, the company? Yeah, so Audio Cardio is a, is a mobile app that um, can assess your hearing and then uh, generates a personalized sound therapy. And the goal of, of this app and this therapy is to better protect, maintain, and actually strengthen your natural hearing ability. So our goal is to really um, get you back to a, a lower hearing threshold or actually, you know, uh, our, our goal is to improve your hearing ability. Huh. So how would, it, uh, how would it do that? Like, what, what are the common reasons people have for hearing loss? And what, you know, tell me some specifics about it. Yeah, so, um, you know, hearing loss, there's different types of hearing loss, and the type of hearing loss that we are targe- targeting is called sensor and neural hearing loss, and this um, accounts for about n- about 90% of the, of the world's hearing loss, and it's the type of hearing loss that's attributed to um, age, to autotoxicity, which is from medications, um, noise-induced from being around loud environments, um, and, you know, of course, disease and some other um, other factors, and the way um, our technology works is by um, continuously stimulating the cells inside your ear, we can cause these these neurons to actually fire. And when they fire, they connect to neurons near them. And by making these connections, this is how our um, our brain uh, processes sound. A signal has to be um, taken from our environment and through this process is sent up to your brain where it's processed as sound. And that's how we interpret, you know, voices and music and things of that nature. So when people lose their hearing, the common version of it, what do they lose? The low frequencies, the high ones? Does the range shorten or what happens? Yeah, it, it really varies for, for different individuals. But in most cases, um, it's the higher frequencies that our um that are damaged first and typically have the the most impairment um and that's just due to you know our environment um and the types of uh, sounds that we um are emitting and listening to through music and uh various other environmental factors so it's the high frequency okay so yeah. how does the uh the, the product work what is it uh, like you know so it creates a custom audio program but what does that entail and how does it get the neurons to fire in a way where it restores some of the high frequency hearing. Right. Yeah. So basically what, what an individual would do is, um, you know, download the app from the app store as they would any other application, go to a very quiet room, use their traditional headphones. You know, it can be, you know, AirPods, Beats, Bose, uh, you know, traditional consumer headphones. So in this quiet room, they would open our app and there is a, there is a feature that, allows you to assess your hearing. Now, this is not a medical diagnosis. It's, it's certainly a, a screening, if you will, so that we can understand um, your threshold of sound for each of the key frequencies or ranges of frequencies that we are um, testing for. And then based off of that understanding of your threshold, 
we, our algorithm will generate a personalized and low level, meaning almost inaudible sound therapy that you would play and listen to for an hour a day. And so an hour a day to, to incorporate that into your life, you know, that's, we're already all very busy people. Um, so we, we want to integrate it into your life. And so we allow um, for integrations with different music players so that you can listen to your favorite Spotify playlist or Apple music playlist that you've already created and import that list into our application so that while you listen to, um, to music, our sound therapy can play underneath at an inaudible level so that it doesn't ruin the sound experience. So you can do this while you're working out, while you're checking email, going for a walk, or even watching TV, as long as you have your headphones in um, and have that, have that sound therapy um, based on your threshold of sound, um, we can stimulate those cells. And then by stimulating those cells over and over again for an hour a day, not only are we helping to create and promote these new neural connections, but we're also supporting them through that continuous stimulation. And so what's happening um, oftentimes with sensor or neural hearing loss is that our cells aren't all necessarily dead. They're often damaged and degraded from different types of wear and tear and environmental factors that I've mentioned earlier. But through that, um, they become desensitized. And so they're not receiving enough stimulation to tell them to fire because, you know, these neurons either fire or they do not. Sometimes they misfire, of course, but they don't half fire. So what we're doing with our sound therapy is stimulating them enough so that they eventually reach their threshold that causes them to fire. And then they wire to the next meaning they cut, they fire together, wire together and send that neural feedback to the brain so that it can be processed as sound. So these we're helping form these neural connections and then continuously supporting them. Um, I like to use this example a lot. And that is the, you know, the very first day that um, you went to work, you probably needed directions on how to get there, where to park, check in at the desk, get shown to your desk and, 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 and all the things that go along with starting your first day of work. But by day two, three, four, and five, um, you no longer need those directions and our cells start to behave the same way. They remember the e quickest, easiest way to accomplish their goal. And that's exactly what we're doing with the audio cardio sound therapy is helping remap the auditory pathway. Oftentimes people call this neuroplasticity. So are the sounds inaudible just to that person or are they inaudible to anyone because of the frequency they're in? Right. So it's actually for that person. So since the, um, since the, uh, therapy is completely personalized based on their hearing ability. By understanding their, that threshold of sound for those frequencies, we stimulate the cells right at that level where it's barely audible. Um, so if you really try to focus on, on the therapy, you may be able to hear it. However, if you play a song or start to um, look at email or just do anything else, your brain will automatically shift its focus away from that and to whatever task is at hand or wherever you're concentrating on. And I would say, um, you know, most people would not um, hear that sound therapy. And if you do notice it, and it is easily noticed, detectable, then that's also your cue to reassess your, your hearing threshold so that um, they are at the barely audible level, because that is where we want to be. The sound therapy should not be easily detectable. And over time, um, Another, another just kind of point around all of this and how loud or not loud the, the therapy should be is that as you use the application and the therapy, that tiny inaudible or almost inaudible sound therapy becomes louder and louder. And that is also a cue to you that your hearing has changed. So when that becomes easily detectable, you would go back, reassess your hearing and receive your new sound therapy based on your new uh, threshold of uh, sound for those frequencies. So if I gave um, my program, let's say I'm 50, and I gave my program to like a 15-year-old, they would probably hear pretty clearly all the sounds that you try to make me hear but are inaudible to me. Potentially. If they have better hearing than you, yes. Um, it, right, exactly. So the therapies okay. are not um, the same for everyone. They're completely personalized. Mm. So what do people experience as they use it? Do they start to hear the background stuff and then they tell you and then you, you change the program or 
do they tell you, hmm, the music's starting to sound different to me or better? It's, it's all self-administered. So actually what, what would happen is um, as an individual starts to use the, the sound therapy consistently, that inaudible therapy will become easily detectable. And that's when you want to go back and reassess your hearing and receive your new therapy because our algorithm um, ge- generates the therapy based on those user inputs um, of understanding, again, their threshold. Okay, so over time, as people hear more and more, they'll change it. They'll. Uh, have you had anyone that has supposedly normal hearing try to keep using this to expand their range? Like, can you expand it beyond normal human hearing, or become you know get like super hearing from it? <laughs> that that could be good, I guess, for some people that would want that. But um, no, we can't. You know, the, we can't get you uh, bionic hearing or anything like that, or you know, unless you hear you know frequencies that bats can hear. Um, you know, we do have limitations, just, you know, our biology and, and our body. Um, you know, we, we certainly plateau. We like to think of this a lot like physical therapy or, um, you know, exercising um, you know, your muscles as you would at, at a gym. You know, consistency is great. Um, getting to a great place with your with your hearing health and then maintaining it there because our bodies will plateau. You know, no matter what, I'll never be, you know, six foot eight and 300 pounds. I can work out forever, but that's not going to happen. <laughs> right. So what, um, you know, if it's proprietary, it's okay. But literally, how do you get neurons to fire by producing it? I guess you have to produce this, the same sound that the a given neuron would normally hear, right? Would normally resonate at. That's correct. And so um, my co-founder um, is the inventor of our technology. And he is a award-winning music composer, as well as a um, a cognitive acoustics uh, PhD. Sir, or excuse me, he he forgot his PhD, but um, you know that's those were his studies, and um, he studied musicology. So he did map out um, you know harmonics and the different frequencies and how those cells behave um, based on the stimulation from those fre- from the frequencies that we are emitting. Um, with different am- different amplitudes um, and some mo- and some modulation, of course, and so that's how we were able to basically map this out. If this, then that, and that's how our algorithm works. Yeah, that's really cool. So, what uh, what do users tell you? What kind of feedback do they give you? So we've you know been quietly um, working with individuals. We've talked to probably you know, about 50 now. Um, and we have quite a few case studies and, and user stories and it's, and it's been incredible. Um, you know, there's a, there's a gentleman in the Bay area who, um, you know, had high frequency hearing loss and also would have something called tinnitus or tinnitus, which is the ringing of the ears, or sometimes it can be a whooshing sound just depends on, you know, where this, this, this uh, tinnitus lives inside different frequencies. And, you know, after working with us in using the audio cardio app consistently um, for about, I think he had used it for about 30 days the last time we had checked in. And, um, you know, his, his quote was tinnitus was robbing him the joy of life. um, And it made it unbearable at some times. And, um, you know, at this point he, his, results were that he had reduced his tinnitus to a point where, um, you know, it's far more manageable. And tinnitus is oftentimes a, you know, we believe a a symptom of hearing loss. Um, And so if we can actually help, you know, move your thresholds or where your uh, threshold of being able to under, you know, hear and process a sound, um, we can also potentially help reduce uh, the effects of tinnitus. Um, and so results vary for each individual, but that was one story from, from a gentleman in the Bay Area. He had also regained some, um, some hearing in the high frequencies and now continues to, to use the solution. So um, now would probably be another good time to, to check in with him. And then, you know, we've also had, um, we also had a, 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 a gentleman in, um, in Louisiana who was an ICU nurse for quite some time. And, you know, there's a lot of, ambient noise in, in hospitals with all the machines running. And then of course, in the ICU alarms going off quite a lot of beeping. So a lot of environmental um, noise that can of course affect 
your your hearing and is also in a choir and at one point um when the band was playing behind him he would have to turn around and ask if they were playing certain notes and they would respond that they they absolutely were and after again using our therapy for about uh, i believe he was a little bit longer it was about 20 20 some days and um he no longer had to turn to ask if the musicians were playing notes because he could hear them. This, and he also mentioned that he played a lot with his grandson and um, the same, and that was the same case. His, his grandson would say, I played that note. and He no longer has to ask those questions. So he's of course, you know, overjoyed that um, he can now play with his bandmates and of course his, his grandson. Too bad you couldn't have helped Beethoven. He lost all his ears. All right. Yeah. I've got to go back in time and, uh, <laughs> And, and help out, right? But I think he did just fine. <laughs> yeah, no, he, he did. He did. <laughs> yeah, he, oh, he made um, it. So what's what's your avatar customer? Are they typically like older and like what do they like? Yeah, so, um, you know, hearing loss affects people of all ages. Um, tinnitus can as well, of course, but um, predominantly the people that we have been working with are, are, are older. I would say, you know, Folks who are either experiencing the issue noticeably now or um, know that, you know, the problem is coming or they can start to sense it. Um, and that's the thing, right? Our brain's an incredible, an, an incredible thing and, and just can easily adapt to your new normal. So hearing loss and is, is gradual and you don't really know it's a problem until it's, it's a problem because you constantly... Um, are recreating a new normal in your brain, whatever that that hearing um, threshold is. And so, so yeah, it's predominantly the older folks, but definitely um, musicians, audio engineers, sound engineers, this is their livelihood. Preserving their hearing um, can make them more effective as they're mixing songs and mastering mastering them as well. Um, we've also seen people from, you know, unions and construction, of course, um, nurses, as I had mentioned earlier. And then also... Um, also athletes, actually, you know, hearing and balance are, are, are tied together. And so, you know, any, any leg up against your competition and just wanting to be more perceptive on the field or on the court. Um, so we've definitely talked to a wide range of folks, but again, predominantly older, but then it goes, but then, you know, you can kind of look at different industries and see where there's a lot of occupational hearing loss or where your hearing is important for, you know, your livelihood. Did you say that hearing is related to balance? Correct. Yes. Right. So hearing and balance. So more about that. Um, Can you expand on that a bit? Yeah. So so right, our hearing the the, the nerves are 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 connected, um, and so with hearing and balance, when when one gets affected, um, you know you know we often compensate in one way or another, and so you know oftentimes you hear about vertigo and things like that. And, and it's, and it's a symptom of an infection or something going on in the auditory pathway. And so as that, you know, as that happens, um, you know, your balance is off and people who are older, who have hearing loss, um, we know that are at three times more likely risk to fall. Um, and there's all these other secondary physical, mental, and even economic, um, issues with untreated hearing loss, but, um, you know, it leads to, to more, to more expenses when it comes to healthcare as well, um, with that risk of falling. Why do you, that's interesting. Why would people fall more if they have uh, hearing loss? Or why would they have these other issues? Like, have you studied any of this or you know looked into it? Yeah, so there's quite a few different studies out there. Um, you know, John, Johns Hopkins had, had a big study, for instance, on the secondary effects of untreated hearing loss and, and, and cognitive decline, right? Um, with like, for instance, um, if, if you're not being stimulated um, through the auditory pathways and these pathways start to basically shut down or, you know, your brain shifts its energy to what's being used. And so, you know, cognitive decline has been closely tied to associated with, um, with hearing loss, the risk of falling, as, as I've mentioned, even uh, academic performance in, in, in children. Of course, if you can't hear your teacher, it's, you know, it's going to be very difficult for you to learn. Um, and so there's quite a few studies out there. Um, Ohio State did another study with, with cognitive decline. Um, I believe Washington is, uh, Washington State is also, um, conducting several studies, um, on hearing loss. And there's a big focus on this because we, 
you know, there's over 450 million people globally that have disabling hearing loss, which is hearing loss that is moderate or above or, or, or worse, I should say. And then, um, and then over 300 million people globally that suffer from tinnitus. And those numbers are only going to grow. Um, the World Health Organization estimates that that number of folks with um, disabling hearing loss is going to double um, to almost 900 million by 2050. And that's with, you know, these personal devices that we have, the smartphones, the headphones that I'm, I'm wearing right now um, are directly in my, in my ear canal. And of course, you know, we, we have all this technology um, that is now taking up our auditory space. And so, um, you know, it's only going to exacerbate the problem. So how do I find the app if I go to the, is it on iOS and Android? And you know, how do I look it up? So, so the app is in is on iOS right now. So, in the Apple App Store, Android um, will be released in in probably mid to late January, and so you can look it up by just typing in Audio Cardio as one word, and you can download the app today. Um, we are just about to uh, finish some new features and make some more releases and uh, continue to develop the product. Yeah, well, I hope it comes out for Android. So, you said January it'll be coming. Correct. Correct. That will be the full Correct. version, and then, um, and then we'll have a, a beta uh, prior to that. Okay. All right. That's great. What's next uh, in addition to getting it out on Audible? Oh, is that Audible? I'm sorry. Um, the Google Play Store for Android. What's next? Yes. Yeah, so we're continuing to um, conduct uh, small studies and, and, and trials and, and build user stories, and really to um, raise education around hearing health. That's, that's one of our major goals. People need to know how important our hearing health is and all the, again, secondary um, physical, mental, and, and economic issues that are tied to them. Um, raise awareness around, you know, the different um, solutions that are out there in the market and, you know, which ones are, 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 are best fit for different folks. Because again, a lot of hearing loss goes untreated. Um, it's not, it's not some, it's a, it's a silent disease or a silent disability, if you will. And so, you know, um, it's not being attended to. So getting that education out there, the awareness that these technologies exist, that, that our technology exists, and that's something that you can do um, from your home and, and, and really, um, just promote um, the the better hearing health and 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 really get out into into the market with these studies and some more anecdotal stories about how people's different successes with our our therapy. Actually, it would be cool if you partnered with uh, you know Audible and as you listen to your books, you know they can also upsell your app to partner with any books you download from them. You know that would be a really cool biz dev thing for you guys to do. Or Spotify or things like that, if they included it with a subscription where they get, you know, your app. So as they listen, they can get, you know, improve their hearing. That would be a big win for you guys, I think. Absolutely. Our goal is, um, you know, to, uh, to you know, distribute this technology to as many people as, as possible. And, you know, you mentioned Spotify and, and, and different software and hardware platforms that have that large user base would be a great way for us to accelerate. And so, yeah, looking at different hardware and software partners to, um, you know, either be affiliates or embed our technology inside their platforms um, to, you know, help people as, as you know, you give them the joy of, of music, of course, in, in Spotify's case. Um, and some of the headphone manufacturers out there. Actually, I think it'd be cool if you guys had a badge or a certification system so that when I listen to something somewhere, you know, audiobook or audible, Spotify, whatever, it's, uh, you know, audio cardio certified. And I guess that would be like a, a badge where it means that what I'm listening to is not just going to inform me or entertain me, but it's also going to help my hearing. It would be like an upgraded version of whatever I listen to. So if you guys made such a thing, I think that would be a, a selling point for the music itself and for, uh, you know, the book itself or whatever it is. Like if there was an artist that partnered with you and, you know, again, whenever someone listened to their music, this was embedded, it'll be great. Yeah. There's, um, there's, there's, a, of course, a, you know, a lot of different opportunities to, to look into and, and working with, you know, an, an artist or, or a musician, I think would, would be a, a great fit. And speaking of music, um, I should also mention, um, there's there's an interesting byproduct of of our technology and that is our equalizer and so um, we have a software based equalizer in our application so that when an individual listens to music it will 
it will tune the, the equalizer based on that individual's hearing ability. So because we understand your hearing thresholds, we can balance the sound and, and, and adapt the sound for your unique ability and make everything sound richer, clearer, louder, and warmer without touching the volume. And so folks have, especially people with hearing loss, um, have mentioned that the music sounds much better, less muffled because it's tuned based on their ability. And this is accomplished through the app or is it, uh, is it accomplished somehow differently? Um, it is accomplished through the app. So um, based off of that hearing assessment, um, we'll understand your threshold of sound. And when you start your sound therapy, there's also um, a, a, you know, a way to connect your Spotify account or your Apple Music account and you can look at your playlists and the songs that you have on your, on your, um, let's say Spotify account for now on your Spotify account and press play. And you can listen to that song while our sound therapy plays underneath it at an inaudible level. And then there's a, there's a button, um, that says, uh, HD sound. When you click that, the equalizer will change based on your, your hearing ability and then fine tune that automatically. That's excellent. Well, Chris, it sounds like a really great product. It'll be, it's, you know, it's effortless to use. It's just there in the background. So uh, iOS store, people can get it, Android coming January. And um, if they want to know more, do they go to audiocardio.com or how do they follow up? Yeah, the best way you can find more information is at, you know, www.audiocardio.com. And um, you, know, you can reach out to us through, through the website there as well if there's any particular uh, questions that we can answer. That's great. Chris, thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. All right. Thank you for having me and uh, appreciate the time. You're listening to the Future Tech Health Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Until I reached age 40, I never realized the obvious, that we all have medical issues, or we at least have a family member or close relation that had, has, or will have them in the future. Medicine and biological systems are the final frontier until we've conquered death, figured out how life began, cured cancer, and understood our purpose in the universe, there's a heck of a lot to talk about when it comes to our health. Future Tech Health means I'll be covering futuristic topics that are actually already in clinical trials, or even starting to appear on shelves, or by prescription, or available for your own use. We dive deep into stem cells, CRISPR-Cas9, the science of sleep, epigenetics, medical testing, cancer, ketogenic diets, stem cells, aging, regenerative medicine, and more. My goal for you, the listener, is to learn from these podcasts. You may very well learn something that may change the course of your life for the better, steer you towards a new career, or give you insight into addressing a serious medical problem. Remember, however, this podcast and its content is informational in nature only. No medical, tax, legal, financial, or psychological advice is being given. If you enjoyed the podcast, please listen, subscribe, like, and share it with friends. Thank you.